Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today, I'm gonna show you the game that I was developing in the last upload. So, I've added one fundamental update to it, which is multiplayer support. So, there's a server for, I mean, there's a folder for all of the server files. And this is version 1.0. So the server is essentially a window which has a console, you can send commands, and it has a list of players, but since nobody has joined yet, I, there are none. So the client has a launcher like last time, although it's a bit different, still functions the same way. Of course I am going to change the document to something that looks a bit more natural, and yeah. So, I'm going to hit play and see what happens. I've called it 8-bit byte because I couldn't think of anything else to call it. There is a bunch of UI differences from between this one and the last one. For example, the buttons look a lot cooler and they don't simply alter between two different textures. The color is being interpolated between two different colors, which can individually be set. Furthermore, there's like a drop shadow, so when I hover over it, it creates a fake 3D effect, even though it's 2D, which is why it's fake, if that makes sense. So, there's an exit button, a settings button, and a join button. What the join button does is it just connects to the server and starts the game. Settings is this. I haven't added anything in yet, but it'll be a lot better. And exit, as you all know, it's going to exit, so, yeah. Seems like there was a bug that restart. Okay, so it generates a username for me to use using a, a combination of vowels and consonants and then a three digit number. After you log in, you're going to be spawned inside of a world which you can kind of interact with, like swim around and walk on, do a bunch of other weird stuff. Right now the console is kind of blocking the view, so I'm going to open up the chat and type in hcon for hide console, and then the console is going to be hidden. Since this is multiplayer, I'll show you guys what happens when somebody else joins the game. So I'm going to go back to the spawn area. Launcher. Log in. Okay. So, the new player is called XOBOP. Not sure how you pronounce that, but anyway. XOBOP is gonna swim away, and Tesla is going to follow. And something you'll notice immediately is that they're both, the, their movements are synchronized, which is really cool because it, it adds, in, it shows that like, the multiplayer thing is working because it's sending a packet to, the, to my router, the router is sending it to the other people, and other people send packets back, and my router gets it, and it displays it in the game. So, yeah. I haven't added the inventory system that I used to have in my old game, but it, and also there is no gameplay yet, like capture the flag or deathmatch or anything like that. So I'm just going to quit out of both of these, and since the server's log is kind of cluttered up with all these people, I'm going to type in clear log as a command. And yeah. For some reason, this player is still there because of a bug, so I'm going to restart the server. Actually, I don't think we'll need it. The, the client's authentication information is put inside of a file called auth.dat, which contains the username and password that the last used to log in. So let's say I go into Game Launcher, and you'll see that it says Matrix 4F. Then a password, which might be 01234567289. And if that's correct, then it's going to save those, I mean it's going to encrypt them, 
then so I save them inside of auth dot dot. The launcher dot properties simply stores what version you used last, and when the launcher loads, it loads the version in as well. So now I'll show you the updated level creator. When I first load up the level creator, you can make a new map or load a map, save this or save it as something. So here's two tools I have, brush and fill all. This time, I think I'll make an ocean map. So I'm going to say new map. I do wish to continue. And I'll make this 53 by 50. That sounds good. So I'm going to make this an ocean map. So I'm going to fill it with water. So all. Yes. Now it's completely blank. With the brush tool, I can add in some sand. I'll crank that all the way up. Make one of these, make a huge island in here. So, add some more sand. And that, that looks pretty good. However, I can't scroll down. So, I have to use the vertical scroll, which is when I hold the control key, it changes the scroll mode from horizontal to vertical so I can expand my island a bit more. I'm going to do that. That looks about right. I don't think the actual islands are filled with sand, but they have a layer of grass and dirt on them. So that's what I'll try to imitate. So we'll add a layer of grass. And then, I mean a layer of dirt, and now we're going to add some grass just to make it look better. So that looks okay, I guess. Not really, but yeah. To show you the different brush sizes, I'm going to put this on 4, and now you can see that the brush is smaller. So I'll add in like a patio, I guess, of stone over here to see how things go. I'm good enough. And let's say I want to make something that's 2x2. Two two. So I'll change that patio into a lava pit. And voila! I'm going to save this level to file save. I'm going to go to desktop, Java, project, and server. And I'm going to override the map.txt that I already have. Actually, I'll say island.txt. And now I can X out of this. Wait, I think I might want to edit something. So I'm going to launch it again. And this time, instead of new, I'm going to hit load. And then I can simply load all of the stuff that I saved. And I can edit it again. So that's the beauty of this level creator. So thanks for watching this video, guys. This is Java Game Dev Vlog number three. If you want to watch more videos like this, then be sure to like, comment, or even subscribe to me. So thanks and goodbye.